Hello one and all, welcome back to Let's Play Factorio. Love this game. I was uh, tooling around on my base a little bit ago, I went ahead and grabbed some more coal to place over in the plastics container, and I realized that I was running extremely low on petroleum gas. So let's rectify that situation, shall we? We have a full storage tank of light oil, which is what's actually bottlenecking us right now. And the heavy is being overly taxed because it's used for lubricant and no petroleum gas. Now this problem will get a lot easier once I get advanced oil processing, which I actually have. I'm an idiot. <sighs> you know, you'd think I'd pay more attention to the uh, research that I'm actually doing, but nope, not this guy. Like, oh man, if only I had advanced oil processing and I actually have it. Not a very smart man. Uh, the advanced oil processing gives you the same products, but at a different ratio. Three heavy, three light, four gas, for the basic oil processing and the advanced oil pro holy crap we're getting attacked let's go defend ourselves i have no piercing ammo i think in these turrets so looks like it wasn't that much of an attack but could get kind of scary um yeah let's give these guys some piercing ammo gonna need to make some more too but there we go problem solved for now hopefully Make some more of that, and I'll make a couple laser turrets while I'm at it. Anyway, so yes, I'm a genius. I guess that's what I get for not having played this for, you know, like a week or two on this run through, on this playthrough. So let's clear out this pipe here and get ourselves a water pump. Where are we with the pumps? Pump, 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 pump. There it is. Offshore pump. Give me. And we will get the water hooked up momentarily. This is a very commonly used technique by just about everybody when they are connecting any of their pipes to these uh, sort of buildings because it is a fantastic technique and should be used by everybody. I'm always up for innovations in games, but I really can't think of a better way to organize these. As you can see, um, normally liquids would not be able to be in adjacent pipes because the pipes will just interfere with each other. It'll say, hey, this is a light oil pipe, this is a petroleum gas pipe, we can't mix our liquids, so blah. But thankfully, the pipe to grounds do not actually share that. So even though this pipe to ground is adjacent to a different pipe, it doesn't actually interfere. The product doesn't actually get mixed. So, no problems. Speaking of, we're going to need to do that. And that. And then I'm going to connect this. Actually, I'll connect this right here. Switch this up a little bit. Another nice thing is if you do put two pipes to ground right next to each other, it does allow you to walk through them. So I highly recommend using as many pipes to ground as you can whenever you're building anything in this game. It does make maneuvering a lot easier. And there we go. So now our oil and our water have been connected. This will hopefully produce a much better amount. It does produce more of the light, which is unfortunate because I already have a ton of light. But the nice thing about that is that I can actually now use that light with some of the other advanced recipes. Um, I will continue to make the solid fuel out of light. In fact, I will go ahead and disassemble this. Uh, I'm going to use my heavy exclusively for uh, what it was being used for. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to put in a, a load balancer here. Not sure why only one side of them is being uh, taken, but oh well. And we have to turn it anyway, so let's just turn it like that. Uh, whoops, wrong, wrong way to balance the load. Not exactly how it's supposed to work. Let's try this again. Good enough. Excellent. So I will hopefully start using my light a little bit more. And then I need to be able to crack light into petroleum gas. As that is very important for the manufacture of just about everything, actually. That's cool. So we're going to put that up here, I guess. I didn't really plan out for a lot of space. I think I was going to put a lot of the stuff below which would work, except that I kind of jammed up this area with nothing but uh, solid fuel plants. So for now, we'll just do it right here. Not a big deal. Um, let me see what 
the actual orientation is. Because you need water and light oil. And you can't switch which of the two ports they come out of. So you have to you have to sort of plan ahead for that, unfortunately. Actually, you know what we can do? We could do it like this. This is actually even better. I'm not quite going to have enough room to do it exactly how I want it. think this will work. I hope. Alright, light crack into gas, because we need a lot more gas than anything else. And we're going to just connect the outputs very quickly. Not a big deal. Make some more, please. Oh, I need iron plates! You know, watching these uh, things with a little you know, oranged out or tanned out clock, if you can say that in the corner. It really reminds me of Red Alert. Actually, a lot of this game reminds me of Red Alert. Just the graphics of it uh, and just, I don't know. Showing my showing my age, I suppose, but that's what I see. It's like a gamer Rorschach test. Except instead of grayish blobs, I see Red Alert everywhere. And I actually do need iron plates, so let's go grab some. I need to set up some radars as well to start scanning some of these outer sectors to make sure that I'm not getting uh, too many horrible enemy attacks coming after me. I could just grab some of these pipes, I suppose. Not a lot there. Iron, please! Give me all of the iron. All the iron and all the iron gear wheels. So this may seem a little too early to state this, but I've actually already been planning on things to do for another playthrough of Factorio. I think I'm going to wait until version 12 comes out with the new endgame material. And I have no plans to abandon this one. I'm still very much enjoying this. Uh, this game is just really enjoyable to play. Nice and relaxing. Fun. Interesting. Nothing wrong with it. But I feel I owe it to you guys to keep keep you in the loop. Let you know what all's going on. Speaking of staying in the loop, let's uh, let's give you some power efficiency because these things are very power heavy. So that'll drop the power usage considerably. We're actually doing better on might be because I don't think we're doing as much sciencing right now. But that made a huge difference. I mean 181 kilowatts, I'm pretty sure it was 840 before. That's a pretty massive drop in power usage. Need to just go around and uh, throw some more of these power modules in. That'll be another one of the things I'll be making very soon. Um, we did make a bunch of pipes to ground. Now we need actual pipes. I also need water for this. So where is our water? Here's our water. Water, can you... Okay, you're not quite exactly where you need to be, but that'll work. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. Water is hooked up, and now the light oil is hooked up. There we go. And now we need power. There we are. So now we are cracking. No, we're not. Yes, we are. We're just not cracking here because I did not put the pipe there. Bam. There we go. Okay, now we are cracking the light oil into petroleum gas, which is something we need far more than we need the light oil itself. Excellent. So the, what little heavy oil we are getting is going to be turned into uh, lubricant, which we will need a lot of. Lubricant is not only used for the robots, but it is also used for express transport belts. Very important. Um, and we are, of course, using it for our solid fuel, which is important as well. And we are starting to very slowly build up a slight reserve, maybe, of uh, petroleum gas. Uh, well, actually, it just looks like I'm keeping up. Actually, yeah, the ratio looks pretty good. It looks like I'm very slightly climbing in my amount of petroleum gas. So that means my throughput is quite adequate. That makes me feel very happy. 
So our plastics production should be upped quite a bit once this starts uh, once it starts making them again. Obviously, I don't really need to right now. What are we lacking here? We're lacking steel. I have a lot of steel. That's what we are lacking because I have ran out because this was never fully automated because I'm bad at this game. Really should have automated this, that at this point, at some point. I'll likely just have to request these and be done with it. But at least we'll be sciencing again. I was wondering what was taking it forever for me to science. And that would be why. Modules definitely going to need to be made soon. But first things first, let's go back to making our power problems go away. Disappear. Poof. Vanish. Hopefully. And we need some extendo arms. Excellent. And there we go. Basic accumulators. You guys are going to be placing these into a... Hmm. Do I want to place them into a storage chest or a passive provider? I think I want to put them into a passive provider. That means that if I request them, the logistics robots will be like, All right, bro, I got that. Not even a problem. Not even a problem. So little of a problem that it's not even problem. I'm good at English. Ness. Okay. So now we'll be cranking these out. By cranking, I mean actually not really cranking, but, you know, producing them well enough. And we're going to need some more of these bad boys. I really should have been making assembly machines at some point automatically. That's one of my resolutions that I've made for my next playthrough is to automate more. Automate more and automate more quickly. I've seen a few uh, LPers who have recently uh, decided to do a challenge playthrough of some sort where they cannot craft anything manually and they have to craft everything with assembly machines. I thought that was pretty clever. I There's no way I could do it. I would immediately fail. I would, I can guarantee you. I would just immediately fail. Cool idea that would be ruined by me and my utter inability to do anything properly. What all materials do I actually need here for these? I need copper plate, steel plate, electronic circuit. So I actually only need to pull two items in, the copper plates and the steel plates. Um, or sorry, the copper plates and the electronic circuits are the only two that I need to pull in. I'm going to try something that I wanted to... This is kind of, this will be my kind of exclusive preview for you guys, because I love you all so much. Two, three, like that, okay. I have had an idea for something ever since I realized one of the interesting um, interactions between underground belts. And I'm not sure if I want to combine. I'm not sure if I want to make this the basis of my next playthrough of Factorio, or if I want to wait until a further playthrough of Factorio. But I have an idea, and that idea is what I'm going to call um, braiding. And it is a. It's an alternative to the standard setup for. Um, we're gonna go and grab some steel here. Am I still? I'm not making this anymore, but I probably should be now. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good here. We can go ahead and make some more steel again, please. Thank you. So braiding. Um, the idea behind braiding is, it's very much like a bus concept, except you are stacking two belts like literally on top of each other. Okay, so yeah, we were. I did make some laser turrets, did I not? Okay. Yeah. Whoa, we are out of ammunition. That is going to be destroyed. That is not good. It's okay. No more ammunition problems if I use lasers. Lasers. There we go. No longer an issue. You can have more bullets as well. I should really be making a lot more bullets. Bullets. Okay. Um, so, braiding. The way it's going to work... And I'm not, like I said, I'm not 100% certain if it's going to be the actual focus of a playthrough or just a optional thing that I could use for a playthrough. But the idea, and it should work, unless it only worked in the modded playthrough I was doing, in which case I'm just making a fool of myself. But the idea behind braiding is that you have a number of different conveyor types interspersed with each other. Okay? Like... 
like this. And I, I'm pretty sure this works. Let's go ahead and test it. We'll just proof of concept this really quickly. Um, we're going to need some more of these. And I'll actually need some express underground belts as well. Which thankfully don't actually need lubricant because they only are built off of those. These do. The express splitters do. Um, I don't know if I can actually braid with three of them. I guess we'll find out. There are a few downsides to this, but what this allows you to do is in the same space concern, you're able to load two different types of items. This may look really silly, but I think this actually has a ton of usage here. Let me make some really simple wooden chests just to show you exactly how this would work. Um, we're going to store these here. And this is the most simplified version of the braiding concept. The reason I call it braiding is because you're kind of let, looping two things in and, in and out from each other like you would if you were braiding some hair. Um, except they're directly in the same strand, essentially. But uh, if this works right, you should be able to distinctly tell the difference between each type. Yeah, you can see how, you see how the red belt has iron on it and the yellow belt has copper on it. That allows you to put two different items in the same series. And what you can actually do with this, depending on how long each of these is, is this can allow you to... And you can even braid with the same material, which could, be, which could actually be one of the best uh, features you would have with this. You would have the ability to have the same material on the same line twice. So you literally have twice the throughput uh, on the same line. Now, the problem, of course, is that each of these has to be a different uh, type of belt. And I think you're kind of limited on exactly how many braids you can do. Um, one of the easiest way to actually one of the easiest ways to actually deviate out of a braid is to use let me see here. Is that good? I think that's good. Um, one of the easiest ways to get out of a braid would be to use splitters. Okay, so there we go. So this is a this is a three three colored braid. Unfortunately, if you have a three colored braid, there is no way to get out with splitters because this is they they literally will only work like this. There's no way to turn the belt other than splitting up the braid uh, somehow, which would probably involve using inserters or something like right here, you could probably, uh, actually at the very end of the braid, you can turn it, but that's pretty much the only option you have. But if you only do a two unit braid, you can actually have splitters, not only just splitters on one end, but actually you have room for two splitters, I believe, per braid. Um, I guess we'll find out. Let's uh, make a couple of these. There we go. And start off with the braid here. Let's give ourselves maximum room. So we actually have four slots in between each braid. And I think we actually, I think we may only be able to get away with three in each one. Maybe. Oh no, we're good. Okay. So right now, so what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the initial braid. It's kind of hard to follow if you're, if you, especially if you're not super familiar with Factorio, this is probably a little overwhelming for you. And it's something I'm not even really sure I'm going to completely grasp here. If you can hopefully see what I'm doing here. You can see that I have the red going underground from the yellow and then splitting off on both sides. So I have access to it on either side and then I have it continuing on. And with the right application of this, I think you can move a lot of product in a very small amount of space while still having access to that product. And you don't even have to have the offshoots. You can just pull directly from the, uh, the items themselves which uh, could be very, very handy. Anyway, I'm kind of digressing here. Let's uh, go back to what I was actually doing, which is setting up some steel schmelters. I need some more conveyors. I have uh, two other things, two other theoretical things that I want to try with a future playthrough. Um... And those will definitely have to wait for said future playthrough. Sorry. Teaser. I know. But uh, that's that's my idea. I'm calling it braiding. And I'm sticking with that. 
Okay, so we're going to be smelting some iron right here. I likely don't actually have to use the reds in the corners to keep the compression, but I think it looks nicer too, so why not? Okay, and you are to be making me... Where are we? Solar panels. Hooray! Five steel plates, so I need one steel plate every two seconds. Fifteen electronic circuits, that really hurts. This is probably going to tax my electronic circuits to the absolute maximum that they can be taxed. Otherwise, there's going to be a revolt. Read my lips, no new taxes, etc. And we also need the copper. So I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to braid this. Like I just uh, just mentioned, so we're we're just gonna I'm just gonna braid it, maybe, if I can get it to work properly. I hmm. they're actually a little too close to each other, so I'm gonna have to do something a little a little jankier. Than what I otherwise would do. So, what if I do this? Okay, and then I need to... Hmm. I think I can actually get away with this by using a different sort of braid. You know what? This is a little... It's a little too space... Uh space limited here. Let's see if I can't um, get this worked out a little bit better. Well, you know what? First things first here. Let's just get this. Let's just get one of these set up and then I can build the other one based off of that. I get it in my head sometimes too much where I, I want to build both parts of a single thing at the exact same time and I never end up getting it done optimally because I end up getting overwhelmed. I'm like, well, I'm trying to build this thing all at once instead of in individual parts and now I'm getting frustrated. So that's not good. So can I get away with doing this? I think I can. I'm pretty sure I can. So we're just going to do this. I actually should get this backwards because I need more of the circuits uh, than the copper. So I'm going to be using the uh, regular underground belts. There we go. Like that. There we go, and I'm likely going to need fast inserters for this, actually, so let's make some of those. Yay! Electric energy distribution is done. Character logistics slots, automation three, lots of cool stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and get logistics robot speed. I need much faster robots. The speed of these robots is too damn low. And I need one of these bad boys, and that should power pretty much this entire thing. And it does. Okay. You need to also make those. And now we can get that up there. And then I need to curve this back around like that. Little janky gets the job done. As I've said before, that's all that matters to me. Does it work? Yes. Good. Done. Ship it. There we go. Likewise, what did I put these in? I put these in a passive provider. Wow, you already have 66 of those. Okay. All right. Passive provider, please. I 
feel like I need extra time here, but I think a big chunk of why this is so slow is because of the lack of electricity. I think that's what's really doing this in. I actually need to expand my logistics network as well. The uh, orange part is the only part that's actually part of this network right here, unfortunately. So let's... Uh, whoop! Get these extended over here. So I've actually gone a little bit over on time this episode, but that's okay. I blame my little digression there where I was talking about random crap that doesn't matter. Pretty typical of me. So I hope you may forgive me. You can forgive me for going a little bit over on this episode of Let's Play Factorio. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.